This chapter is about intervals. Intervals are just the distance between two notes. You can think about it if you're running intervals, you're running a specific distance, maybe a specific time period. So what we're learning in this chapter is we're gonna learn how to identify intervals by sight and also how to build them ourselves. When you go into theory, you'll probably have to identify them by ear and being able to listen to them and know what they sound like. That's not really a component of our class, but it might help you if you do have a keyboard to play these intervals so that you can kind of hear what we're learning about. So the first thing I wanna show you are just some examples of intervals. I already have these up here. So this is what we're talking about. This is an interval right here. Now, since these two notes are stacked on top of one another, that's what we call harmonic intervals because that C and that F would play or sound at the same time. So I have a C and an F and we would play those together. So that's, they're playing in harmony. So that's a harmonic interval, and we'll learn what the name of that is in just a little bit. This one right here, that's one note, and then there's another note after that. They could be quarter notes in a song, they could be half notes, whatever. It's the same C to F, C, F, but they're one after another like a melody, so that's a melodic interval. So harmonic, melodic. Now, the first thing we're gonna learn besides those terms are just how we're going to name these intervals. And the first step is just to learn the generic name or the numeric name. So all that we have to do to figure out the generic or numeric name is just count. So we start from the bottom note, and we kind of think about that bottom note like the first degree of the scale. So you can kind of think about this as C being the bottom note, like this was a C scale. So C would be the first scale degree, if we had a note there, that would be D, which would be two. E would be three. That F right there is the fourth. So this is a fourth as far as the generic name. So you count from the bottom note as one, two would be the space, three, four. You can also do it just by letters. So you could write in C, F, and then just count from the bottom to the top letter, include them both, C, D, E, F, well I did that wrong, but C, D, E, F, we have four fingers. I just couldn't hold those out like that, there. <laughs> so that would be a fourth as far as my generic goes. This is the same thing, C to F, so that's still a fourth. This one's just a harmonic, that one's melodic. Let's do the next one together that I have written up here. This one is C, and what's that letter up there? That's an A. So you can either go C, D, E, F, G, A, which would tell us it's a sixth. I think it's real easy, to, especially if you're on a piece of paper, just to go one, D would be two, E three, four, five, A would make six. Let's do the next one together. So again, these are just the numeric, generic interval. There's no specific quality assigned to them because later we're gonna learn major, perfect, minor, augmented, diminished. Don't worry, you'll get it. But right now, let's just get the numeric one down. So let's do this one from E to D. Again, you can count the letters or you can just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh. Okay? Now, when you take ear training classes, sometimes you learn what these sound like. And just as an example, I always learned when I was growing up that a fourth sounded like, here comes the bride and you can learn different tricks for sixths and sevenths, and if you play those on your own, you might think of some songs that have specific intervals in it, like a sixth is, my Bonnie lies over the ocean, so my Bonnie, hi Bonnie. Anyway, um, different intervals have different sounds, and our next project is actually gonna involve writing a project based on a specific interval of your choice, so you can stay tuned for that exciting project coming up. Let's do a few more generic intervals just to make sure that you understand that before we proceed on to learning the specific names of them as they fall within the major scale. So let me just write a couple of these up here and I want you to do these with me. Make sure that you understand. All right, so let's do these together. So the first one here, we're gonna count one, two, three. So what's this first one? It's just a good old third. And I always remember 
from playing the piano especially that a third always goes from space to space or it could look like line to line, just a little trick. And you'll start to recognize those thirds, especially when we go to chords and when there are two thirds stacked on top of each other to make a chord. For example, that's a chord. So there's a third and another third, but we'll get to that later. Let's do the next one. So we count one, two, three, four. What is it? It's a fifth. Or if you did it with the letters, it would be from E to B, so E, F, G, A, B makes our fifth. The next one, whoa, what did she do there? Is there any distance between those notes? Those two notes are right next door to each other. So remember when we said you count that first note as the one? This is just a one, AKA that's just called a unison. So it's, it's a first, it's really, there's no step or there's no space between those. But that's what we call a unison, and later we'll learn that that's called a perfect unison. So if two people had, so if one person was singing this one, one person was singing this one, or if two different instruments were playing that, they're playing in unison. They're playing the same pitch on the piano. C and C. All right, so this, remember that is unison. The next one, this goes from F to F. So it's not the exact same pitch, like this one was C to the exact same C. It's F to the next F up. Let's count it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're also gonna call that an, anybody remember from a long time ago? An octave. And you can remember that, like the prefix or whatever, the OCT. Think about octopus, octagon, eight sides or eight, whatever octopus legs are. Octave is an interval of an eighth. So a unison and octave, and we're gonna learn later that those we're gonna put a P in front, standing for perfect. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good synopsis of generic intervals. From here, go ahead and start on your first worksheet of your homework assignment, which is just identifying intervals by number. Make sure you understand the generic interval. From there, we're gonna proceed on and we're gonna learn how to name these with some specific qualities for the notes when they fall within the major scale. And you'll know what I mean in just a little bit.